since we got this thing started, it's kind of taken traction. Yeah, it's and all your fault. Somewhere out there, five people took the time to listen to our videos we put together and hit subscribe. So I, I'm excited and thankful. I didn't I didn't expect this to happen without any kind of publicity or, <laughs> or formalized marketing strategy. Well, I'm not much on strategy, but, you know, <laughs> I think there's a lot of folks out there that will appreciate what you're doing and certainly appreciate the, the country part of the music. Well, I'm excited to uh, finally present them with some some of your own music uh, well, we're that you do and Jerry that. worked on. So We're going to do that today, and thanks to that guy we got in the studio today with us, Terry. Yeah, we got a newcomer, Mr. Terry. And we're not going to throw out your last name because, you know, no, he's, uh, anonymity is important in this game. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's my livelihood. Yeah. He, he's the one I lean on. So the song is called The Box. The Box. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, just, just a short re recap, if you wouldn't mind, uh, the inspiration behind it and well, when you wrote it and all that good stuff, whatever you want to tell us. I had no inspiration, uh, and, but I ran with a, a gentleman for several years by the name of Johnny Duncan, which is a country artist. And regardless where we went and how long we was gone, in the car he'd want to hear that story about my childhood and my granddad burning my box. And I told him one day, I said, Johnny, what intrigues you about that? And he said, well, here you are in the country music industry, and you're riding along here with me, and I keep thinking that you're not even supposed to be in here, you know, because your granddad burnt your guitar, did he not? And I said, yep, he sure did. So he said, so what inspired you to go forward after he burnt your guitar. Which he said, I think it's a little sad, but nevertheless, you overcame that, and now you managed to involve yourself with the music. And I said, yeah, I did, but it was a long time coming. And he said, uh, at that time, he said, I think you ought to write a song about that. And I said, well, who in the hell would want to listen to it? He looked at me and he said, well, you might be surprised. You just might be surprised. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sure it would be, but John, I don't, I'm not quite sure I could write a song about that. So this went on for about eight or nine years. Every time we'd get in the car, we'd go to Nashville. Somewhere between going and coming, he'd want to hear that story again. And then they always end it with the same thing. You need to write that, boy. You just need to write that. So... I finally decided, okay, he's not going to shut up about me writing this song, so I'm just going to write him one. So I wrote it, took it down there to him, and this was probably 2005. He passed in 2006, so it might have been four or five. And I took it down there, lyric form, and handed him the paperwork. And uh, he sat there and was reading it. And... I've never seen Johnny tear up at all. So he said, do me a favor. Make me a promise that you're not going to leave it in the, in the drawer. Because all these other things I've found that I've recorded has been in your guitar case to their dang near wore out and I can't even read them. So, you know, do something with this. Don't leave this just laying around. Make me that promise. So I said, okay, I will. What Was he on his way out? Well, he didn't know he was sick at the time. He died of a heart attack. Oh, I so, see. But he had uh, somehow or other he had fell in love with my history as a child. So he felt that that was important for the people to hear and how we'd overcome and where I was at that point. So I said, okay, John, uh, I might get you to do it. And he said, well, whatever. Don't leave it in the drawer. So, I made my promise come true and she went ahead and did the song after he passed. Well, we'll play it and then we'll sure. we'll jump right back. Sure. Well, I was raised in the hills of 
Tennessee, not too far from the gray smokies, back among those thickets and the evergreens. Well, there wasn't much to do in my neck of the woods, and not much you could, not much you should. But Saturday night would roll around, there's no doubt where I'd be found. Yeah, I'd pull me up a chair near the radio and turn that knob way down low, listen to the music of the grand old opera show. Well, they'd bring on Lefty and Hank and Merle, Lester Flat and Minnie Pearl, the sweet soft voice of Patsy Klein sent cold chills up and down my spine. Well, I got it in my head at a very young age. Nothing be better than being on stage. So I swapped my gun for an old guitar. I was going to become a recording star. But now Pa had rules that you just didn't break. To cross that line was a big mistake. So I hid that box beneath the hay. Hoping someday I could learn to play. Well, as time went on, I fixed that box. Sure enough, one day I got caught. The scorn I took from my own folks to watch that box go up and smoke. Paul looked at me with his calloused hands and said, The way through life is working the land. Mind the crops and tend the fields. For folks like us, there ain't no deals. Well, living in one world and walking in another. Then one day I discovered if I couldn't pick, Mike could write. So I zeroed in and I set my sights. Yeah, I sat down and wrote some lines of wit. Arranged them to so that rhyme and fit. When I was through, I headed out for 16th Avenue. Well, I walked the streets on Music Row, talked to folks I didn't know. But I managed to leave those lines of wit with some of my Nashville associates. Well, I went on home and sat around. I finally got a call from Mr. Brown saying, Hoss, you got a spot on Music Row. Those songs you wrote went solid gold. Well, I swelled up proud before that crowd when they handed me that writer's award. I thank Mr. Brown in the whole dang town. But most of all, I thank the Lord. Well, they put my name in the Hall of Fame for the songs I wrote and never sang. So I guess I'd lived a lifelong dream. I was now a part of the music scene. But you know, there's only one thing still haunted me. I wish my folks was around to see what this old country boy had turned out to be. Then they could see there's really no shame in having your name in the Hall of Fame. Besides all that, it's them I blame for my desire. The day they set my box on fire. We were working on a song that Johnny had uh, written and released years ago. And I told Terry, I said, I want to put that on this album. Which one was it? Now, the box came from Duncan, as I, I told you. 
So we're working on one of Johnny's songs and this plat on the wall drops to the floor and it says the box. Just the metal part. Just the metal part. Landed up on the floor. Oh, the wood stayed hanging? The wood stayed hanging. And just the face of it fell Just off? a box fell to the floor. Huh. And I looked at Terry and Terry looked at me and both of us, our hair was standing <laughs> on end. You felt like he was here? Uh, well, we felt the presence. I, yeah. I did. Yeah. What about you, Terry? Did you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely here. So it was like, you guys need to forget that song and move on to the box. And that's when that fell. So we went back to working on the box. <laughs> we didn't follow through with, with the Johnny song any further because I felt like that he was right here and he had his say so when that plaque fell. So we went back to the box. But let me tell you, all the way home that night, I could feel the presence. Yeah. So I called Terry when I got home, and I said, "Well, did you uh, did you lose the presence before you got home?" And he said, <laughs> "Just as I got home." <laughs> yeah. So Duncan was very alive right here in the studio that night. It was. It was. It wasn't scary, but it was a direct point. You guys need to be working on the box. So we went back and worked on the box. It was it was a lot of fun doing it. Well, I appreciate you sharing it and uh, letting us present it to folks. We just hope they like it. We'd like to know if they like it. Yeah, and I, I didn't think we'd actually have people paying attention to the video, so if there's anything people want to talk about or any yeah. questions or something just throw them on down there yeah we're right here yeah we're small enough to where anything you post we'll read that's right exactly <laughs> so, so we're wide open folks that's right. send us all your information and all your requests we'll do what we can